Hello ladies and gentlemen, Dick Coughlin here. Let me just put my cane up there. And uh, I know I haven't got the green screen up yet. And you're probably wondering, when the fuck are you actually going to use this bloody thing? Well, I've been tidying the house up. I've been trying to rearrange everything. And I'm not fucking around. This is why I've got the back to the wall here, because I've moved everything around. And, uh, but you know, beyond this camera is just, it's just a pristine, you know, spotless, clean haven of, you know, of absolute order and beauty. And so, welcome, my name is Dick Coughlin, and this is a video about a subject that I didn't think I'd be talking about um, ever again, really, and certainly not in regards to, certainly not uh, in, in regards to why I'm going to be talking about it. And it's to do with the uh, political party known as UKIP. Um, the UK Independence Party. And now, I basically haven't talked about them really for a long time, um, not in any great detail. Um, I've brought up Nigel Farage, but he doesn't count. You know, he's just a, uh, he's a pot, he's like a fucking, he's like a racist version of fucking Argos. He's fucking everywhere. But UKIP essentially, effectively, for a while now, um, have been dead. Um, and they died. They still exist. I mean, they nearly literally died um, not that long ago. They, a couple of weeks ago, they were facing bankruptcy and a financial meltdown. So, um, and they're still around somehow. I think they found the £12.50 together to get it back up. They probably had a bit of a stock boost from that money they made the day after Brexit, um, which for Nigel Farage, the stockbroker, conveniently helped them with, apparently. Now, UKIP... Um, <laughs> UKIP have, are, are entering into um, what appears to be a very new era. It's the era of the. It, it's probably going to be. It's going to be UKIP the dank meme era. I think is the best way to describe it. UKIP the age of the shitlord, because um, recently, um, you can now. Let me just keep putting you into context here. UKIP um, effectively. That recently there was a by-election. There was a. Um, there was a local election in some town. I forget the fucking name of it. It doesn't matter. But um, in this in this little election, UKIP did run a candidate. Now, um, and and this is how badly UKIP have fallen um, since basically the referendum and since Brexit uh, being confirmed. Um, Brexit came third from bottom. They were third from the bottom, um, which was which was uh, 380 votes, which equaled 1.7 percent of the electorate. That's where they were. Now, to put this into context for you, um, the party that finished fourth from bottom ahead of UKIP had 2.3% of the vote, which is 500 and something uh, votes, and that was the uh, Women's Equality Party. Mm. Yes, the Women's Equality Party finished a good, you know, you know, six, no, 06 of a percent ahead of UKIP in a local election. Now, obviously. Uh, when news of this got out, that, that, that you know, the, w word that the Women's Equality Party had beaten UKIP in an election by a couple of hundred votes, negligible, um, this kicked into gear the, uh, the people who aren't going to be standing for any of that women's equality bullshit, because why do we need, why do we need a women's equality party? Women have equal rights, don't they? Yes, of course. And of course, we are leaving, uh, you know, we are leaving uh, the European Union, so you could ask, what the fuck do you want UKIP for? But apparently, this triggered an idea in the head of some of uh, YouTube's um, best you know, sort of not right wing, but sort of, but not really, um, totally sort of liberal, uh, you know, just hates everything to do with the left and because the left are the real Nazis and they just call everyone Nazis. Uh, you know, you know your, 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 your basic pricks on YouTube. And first one was Count Dankula. Now, Count, Count Dankula, obviously looking to try and get uh, something to sort of be associated with him, because let's face it, Regardless of how much he's been able to benefit from the whole pug gate incident, uh, let's face it, you're not exactly, it's not exactly the sort of thing you want to be remembered for when they bury you and your tombstone, is, and when they look back and when people remember, go, oh, Count Dankley, yeah. He was that cunt who got fucking fined 800 quid in a Scottish court because he taught his pug how to do a Nazi salute to the, to the command, gas the Jews. You don't want to be remembered for that, do you? So, he made out, he posted a tweet, because this is obviously how you make a decision this important, uh, this is how seriously he took it, and he said, if I get 10,000 retweets, I will join UKIP. And he said, seriously. 10,000 retweets. Okay, fine. And he got them. 
And he said, I'm a man of my word. I've joined UKIP. Do you know who hasn't joined UKIP? Count Dankula's pug. Hmm. Even his fucking pug ain't that stupid. He probably asked his pug, do you want to join UKIP? And the dog just looked at him and went, bitch, please. You know, that's so... Count Dankula is now officially a member of UKIP. And, and of course, UKIP, I'm sure, you know, were probably, you know, thrilled. You know, you would, you would have thought, yeah, it's just brilliant. We've got the Count Dankula. A guy whose name we don't even fucking really know, who's literally known as the Nazi punk guy. Right? And he's Scottish, which gives him an advantage because Scottish UKIP members are like rare as rocking all shit. So, so he's got that. So he joins UKIP. And because obviously all these guys are such, you know, sort of strong-willed, single-minded individuals who do their own thing and aren't, you know, aren't interested in like good group think and all that other stuff and uh, you know f clicks and memes and all this other shit they all decided like, a load of them decided oh I'm going to do that too let's all join UKIP so the first one after that was um, Cargon Sargon of a card yes again Sargon of a card said you know announced he was joining UKIP yeah fucking I'm going to join UKIP yeah woohoo so so now him and Count Dankula yeah with the UKIP with the UKIP boys we're with the UKIP YouTube with the YouTube the UKIP tube massive. And then shortly after this, out of nowhere, fucking hell, Paul Joseph Watson. I know. Oh my god, Paul Joseph Watson, PJW, he stepped up and says, I'm joining you, Kip, too. And everyone's like, whoa, here we go. This is getting interesting. Now, and uh, a few days ago, a bit late to the party, but never mind, um, the now what I'm assuming is the United Kingdom Independence Party um, gay division, Milo. Yes, Milo is back, ladies and gentlemen. Milo yanking off kids a lot. He has returned. I'm sure that Paul Joseph Watson, you know, working at Infowars, Paul Joseph Watson probably suggested it to him. And uh, and fuck it, why not? You know, so. And so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, the four the four you know horsemen of the twat apocalypse have all joined UKIP. UKIP. UKIP is now. A proud a party that proudly boasts as its members, Carl. I wouldn't even rape you, Benjamin. You know the you know Swindon's best. You know Swindon's massage parlour expert, Paul Joseph Watson, an advocate of Pizzagate, and the man who's written such articles as Racist Facts, that literally argues that the reason black men are more likely than white people to get killed by police in a violent incident is because black people commit more violent crime than white people. This is a fact, right? Okay. And of course, Milo. Um, paedophilia isn't all that bad. I mean, come on, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes kids are sexy, and uh, yeah, that got back. Milo Yanni, yeah, Yanni um, who I'm sure didn't help his case any further with uh, his reasoning, where he jo he jokes saying, "Oh, I hope people start you know start killing and going out and, and uh, murdering journalists," and then someone did, and then when someone did that, it's like you can't blame me. I didn't do it. Oh, you can't you can't blame me. No, 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 no. of course not. <laughs> Of course you can't blame you, Milo. You are devoid of all responsibility, aren't you? Because that's your thing. That's what you've always done. It's what all of these guys do. In fact, in fact, you know, the, you know, the funny thing is, you know, that oh, they've got Count Gastadu's Nazi pug Dankula, who, by the way, is really helping his case for the idea that the whole Nazi pug Gastadu thing was just a joke. Um, because he's recently been sharing and promoting um, conspiracy theories and um, and bullshit surrounding George Soros, you know, and um, or you know the Elder of Zion, as he should be known. And yeah, he's he's literally been sharing the George Soros was a Nazi who helped the Nazis, you know, basically repossess Jews. And and he goes, oh, and he posted a tweet saying, I showed you the clip from this interview, and it's a short clip from a 60-minute interview, from a, from an interview on 60 Minutes rather, and. They only show you this one. You'd think, I mean, you'd think it was a long interview. Why would you only show this 30 second clip? Could it be that it's because it's rubbish? He was 14 years old. He was under, he was, un, he was hiding out as a Christian, being looked after by a geezer. He was there when they repossessed stuff. He's 14. What do you want him to do? I know, do you want him just to fucking rip off his fucking mace and reveal his lizard mask and fuck him up? No. Idiot. So yeah, so well done, Count Dankula. Yeah, you're really doing yourself favours in the old I'm definitely not an anti-Semitic Nazi by promoting anti-Semitic pro uh, conspiracy theories that um, basically the Alex Jones, that is standard Alex Jones thing. But then I guess you're hanging around with these people, it's what you want to do. Now you might be wondering, as, now the question you've got to ask yourself really is why? 
Why UKIP? Why have these four guys now decided to join UKIP? Joining UKIP, fine. And you know what? I at least admire them. I give them props for at least getting involved in politics. You know, it's a uh, it's something more people should do, get involved in politics. But why UKIP? Why UKIP and why now? Because the fact of the matter is this, UKIP doesn't need to exist. It hasn't needed. There's a reason why UKIP died not that long, RIP, not that long ago. There's a reason they nearly went into fucking insolvency. There's a reason why they've had five, they've had five different leaders in the last 18 months. Yeah. Fucking like Farage has threatened to come back each time and they're like, no, come back with a moustache, Mr. Snrub. Right? So you've got, so why are these four guys now choosing to get involved? Now, of course, if you listen to them, they'll tell you that the reason they're getting involved now is because they want to get involved and they want to support a party that has principles and beliefs and ideals that they believe in. And of course, well, that's bullshit, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, UKIP was about one principle, leaving the EU, the UK Independence Party. And... That's what we got, you know? As much as I make fun of them and as much as they are irrelevant now, the reason they're irrelevant is because they won. You don't need to fucking be, I mean, if you win, if you've got one objective in a game and you get, and your objective is achieved through whatever means nece possible or necessary or, you know, the just circumstances that occur, you don't need to be there anymore, you know? Once, you, once you've won a football match, you don't stay on the pitch, do you? You know? Once you, once, you know, if you're having sex and the woman has an orgasm, you know, you don't just, you know, you don't keep fucking after she's left, do you? You don't sit there just banging the fucking pillowcase, obviously if you're war corpse, you do. But, well, there's a very good reason why I think, now this is just my theory, and um, bearing in mind I am right about, about these sort of things pretty much all the time. And um, the reason, let's face it, they're joining UKIP. The fact is this, by joining UKIP, they are joining a, you know, a, 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 a political party that is, you know, everyone knows about, that is, you know, is, has had, you know, one of the biggest influences in uh, British politics in recent years. It's got, you know, it's, it's, it's basically, it's a name, it's, and it's official, it's, it's re it real, it's proper, right, it's pucker. And by joining UKIP, they are now legitimising themselves. They are giving themselves a sense of credibility and they're raising their profile in a way that they can afford. And also, the fact that UKIP are doing so badly gives them an advantage. Because when you link between them, they've probably got, what, a couple of million followers and subscribers online, you know, for fly their various means. So a couple of million supporters, you know, who I guarantee you, you know, virtually none of them are going to fucking vote for UKIP. But the fact is, that gives them an advantage to say, look, you know, you're losing to the Women's Equality Party. I mean, why don't you just put a dress on and dance around like that? You know? So that's what they do. So that gives them an advantage. But also, the other great thing about joining UKIP is not only does it give them an air of legitimacy and credibility and raise their profile, it does it without them having to risk, you know, actually, you know, UKIP actually winning something and them having to then actually work and do, you know, and actually do a, do have a job that's important, you know, they're not going to end up having a proper job, you know, they're not going to do that, they're, particularly Milo, that motherfucker, honestly, fair play to him, you know, you know but Milo's not going to fucking want a job, Carl definitely doesn't want, they've got their jobs, they're, they're online, they're, they're, they're inter, they are internet, they are internet fucked up, that's what they do, they, they cater to the mass, they give people on the internet the angry, spotty, fucking greasy, ginger-haired, fucking spot-covered, fucking scrotum-faced, angry little fucking pubeless, fucking overweight shit, but shit lords who stink of fucking pickled onions and stale piss. They give them a reason to blame everyone else in the world for their problems, right? So, that's all they want. And they want to do that whilst being able to exploit UKIP's profile. So it might be not long before we see, can we see question time with, oh God, David Dimbleby going, and on tonight we have, we have the uh, so-and-so Saudi Javid from the Conservative Party, the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer. We also have Sargon of Akkad and Count Dankula. Fuck my life. 
So, so they've joined Yuki for that reason. And the person I feel most sorry for, if I'm being honest, and this sounds, it's going to sound weird, I feel a bit sorry for Katie Hopkins. Because this is something, I, if I had to bet money, I would have said beforehand, no way these guys are going to get accepted. They might join, they might try and join up, but you know, there's no way Yuki, because Yuki, for all their flaws, one thing they became, you know, one thing that they essentially had to do was they got in so much trouble because their members kept, you know, tweeting out stuff, you know, that was incredibly racist and, you know, offensive and, you know, anti-Semitic and, you know, advocated genocide and shit like that. They tweeted all this stuff out and they would get in trouble. So UKIP had to avoid taking on members who they knew were going to be trouble beforehand. And Katie Hopkins, Katie Hopkins, who, you know, is much bigger than these guys, she applied to join UKIP in 2015 three times. And all three times, UKIP went, uh -uh, no. No, uh, the survey says, like they, they didn't take Katie Hopkins, because she, they knew she was going to be trouble. And they're right, she would have been. Um, and it wouldn't have made much of a difference, I, I, I shouldn't wonder. Um, so yeah, so that's what, but now, they've sunk down so low. They are so fucking, they're at a point where it's like, fuck it. We've got to, we've got to take off. This guy from YouTube, who's got a big audience, his name is... His name is, fuck, you know, fuck the Jews, 1488. Um, you know, he wants to join. He wrote this new book called, called the Holocaust Alternative Theory. Um, you know, oh, he's joined. He wants to join. Fuck it, why not? So that's that explains to me why they've joined, and I do feel bad for Katie Hopkins. But another another advantage, another thing, one of the reasons they've accepted them is is, is these days. UKIP has, you know, basically stopped trying to pretend that they're a party with just a couple of, you know, we're not, we're no, we've got no more or less, you know, yes, we have elements of extreme at all, people who are a bit, you know, a bit off, bit off, a bit weird, a bit nutty, we have those people, but, you know, no more than any of us, the media is just, there's just a conspiracy in the media to, you know, to, to focus on them, they never focus on all of them, they never focus on the army of Holocaust denies that the Liberal Democrats have fucking got, yeah, of course, and of course, as we've seen, the media never focuses on Labour being, having issues with that, you would, you know, the, the, the labour is fil filled with fucking anti-Semites news that's going on uh, lately. No, they never focus on that shit, do they? In fact, UKIP has embraced its nutters. It's, UKIP has now accepted that it is the party of the nutters. And the reason they've accepted it is that's all they've got left. There's no reason to be a member of UKIP anymore unless you're such a nutter that even the Conservatives and Labour are not suitable for you, even though they both support them, they are supporting Brexit and are going through with leaving the EU. But no, they don't want to join those fucking... They don't want to join those that bunch of communists, do they? No, so. So all you've got... So if you come across a UKIP member on, on Twitter or social media, it, you're not going to find anyone saying anything even borderline fucking reasonable. Here's some things that I found within the last few days, right, of fucking Twitter... UKIP... Supporters. Okay, this is one. This is from. Okay, now recently, a couple of weeks ago, the the government was um, the government announced that it was uh, voting on a bill to pass legislation that would um, that was basically specifically targeted towards uh, outright banning and criminalising and uh, you know sort of serving a harsher punishment to people to this um, you know this uh, aspect, this pornographic genre called upskirting. Obviously not in any sort of, obviously not consensual upskirting, but basically this, um, this, this, um, you know, lifestyle which involves men taking video cameras and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, telephoto lenses and, you know, putting mirrors on their shoes and shit like that, and not that I've looked into it or anything, but these guys who go to public places where there are women and they attempt to film up these women's skirts or, you know, take pictures of them without them knowing, and, um, I mean, obviously, without their knowing, they're not going to be there in the middle of the field, naked, going, bleh, wanking away, looped up fist and a hammer. No, they're going to be, they're going to be a little bit subtle about it. But that's basically, it. and then they upload it onto the internet. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think most people would agree. Yeah, I mean, that's a violation. I mean, given some of the things that you see people doing pornography, I'm sure it can't be that difficult. I'm not, you know, it can't be that difficult to get a woman to to do it as if it's fucking fake, like most porn is, you know. I mean, you know, I mean, you don't have to do it for real, you know. Most of those women you see in porn films who are dressed in uh, nurses' outfits, they're not qualified medical professionals. In fact, 
are, you know, most of them haven't even passed basic health and safety. They haven't even got a first aid certificate. So, you know, don't take too much, you know, don't read too much truth into it. Um, so, now this is what happened. Um, as you would think, yes, I think that's a fair, reasonable thing. Women should be able to go outside wearing a skirt without the fear of some greasy fucking corduroy trousered wearing fucking weirdo down the street coming at her with a fucking, you know, with, with his fucking James Bond spy equipment and, and shoving it right up her fucking gash and then fucking fit, fit photo photographing it and then uploading it to fucking Reddit. That should probably not happen. You know, that should be a crime if someone does that. But apparently not, no. Um, apparently it was... Uh, <laughs> it lost by one vote. There was one... There was one guy. There was one guy who... Who would, it wouldn't go through. With this government, the Tory party, could not get through a bill that, that made it illegal to violate women's fucking you know, privacy and intimacy and then publicly display it on the internet without their consent. They couldn't do it. But, uh, but I wasn't more... But that was to, by the by, because this is... I know on the internet, I will find people who will defend or attempt to argue anything. And, um, and, you know, no matter how fucking just stupid it is, you know, there's, and there's no need to. You don't have to argue these things. They do it, and because they're doing it, you know that these fuckers have got, these are the big geezers who are doing it. But I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, go on Twitter, and I guarantee you, I can find one person who is arguing against, or is making an argument, you know, against this upskirt, you know, criminalising upskirting, I can find it in less than a minute, right? 27 seconds later, I found this. And this was a guy who had lots of UKIP stuff on his page, but he was called at underscore men's underscore rights underscore. And this is what he said, and he starts off, as much as I agree with upskirt, with that there should be upskirt legislation, however, I don't think it's right that a woman should have a camera stuck under, shoved under a dress, but this is honestly what he said. He made the argument that all men's rights activists make, which is against any common sense, reasonable legislation or any fucking discussion that involves um, any sort of sexual activity or the issue of consent around, you know, with involving women. He made the false accusation argument. This is what he said. As much as I agree with the upskirt legislation, oh, I'm totally on board. I've been supporting it since day one. He says, I fear that this will lead to an increase of false claims against men and ruin millions of lives. Millions. You think millions of lives are going to be ruined? What, this, this law's going to come in and women are going to be right, right, dearie, the shortest skirt they possibly can, right, hooked right up, halfway up their arse, and they're going to walk around with their bloody legs wide open, and they're going to do that, you know, they're just going to be doing that. They're going to be on stilts, walking around on over men's heads, or hanging on to a fucking, like, hot air balloon, so they can falsely accuse men of looking up their dress. And, look, I'm not being funny. It's, it's for people who record this shit. In fact, so, there's going to be an easy way to prove whether it was not or not, you know. If, and how can you do it in an unsubtle way, exactly? What is this? What is this? What are you going to say? I'm just... Uh, uh, what I was doing, I was just photographing. The, the, I was photographing... A, I'm a bird watcher. I'm a bird watcher. I'm a bird spotter. And I know, I thought I saw... You know, I thought I saw a fucking, you know, massive Argentinian, you know, wanking eagle in the sky. And so I laid on my back so I could get a good picture of it. And you happened to walk over. Um, as a bit of fear, why do they only apply this fucking... So, we shouldn't make a, like a law because there's going to be false accusations. Well, why don't we just apply that logic to every other law? Why is it only these laws? Why is it only things like rape and, 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 and domestic violence and, you know, you know, stuff like that? Why is it only issues like that? Why is it only issues like upskirting laws? Why don't we apply it to all fucking laws and just say, yeah, you know what, because there is a chance... Because, let's face it, False accusations, you know, falsely accusing people of a crime is, a, is wrong. It's a bad thing. It shouldn't happen. People shouldn't do it. And it's something we should look to eliminate, yes? Well, there is only one way you can... The logical conclusion, the only solution, 
is to eliminate and abolish all laws. Because then there is no law for people to be falsely accused of breaking, no crime can be committed, therefore you have eliminated the problem. I mean, yes, women are getting eaten and babies are getting crushed to death left, right and centre, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We've stopped before. No innocent men are going to be accused of taking, putting a camera crew up some woman's clunge. This is a great one. I'm going to move on now. This, so this is, this is a guy called Mark underscore UKIP. Mark underscore UKIP. Mark from UKIP. Literally, this is, a, this is the entire tweet. Why do academics have an obsession with evidence and statistics? Don't quote that crap at me. I will stick to my own views. Where do you start with this? Don't give me this shit going, oh, you know, yeah, the left the left won't engage in reasonable civilized debate. What am I supposed to do with this cunt? You don't want evidence or statistics? Okay, well, once upon a time in a land far away, the mole had been working very hard all morning and you know what I mean? It's been proven that peak countries that leave the EU, uh, you know, within two years they uh, they completely dissolve. They slowly turn into uh, you know just piles of toe jam and sink into the ocean. There you go, there's my views. Here's my other view. You are a fucking prat, my friend. You know, like, you know, this is something you will never hear a woman say. This is him. Now, this might be what This is worse than... This isn't worse than the other guy, but this is, this is more mental. Ready? Remember... Remember that the female orgasm doesn't matter. And probably doesn't exist. Talk about psychological projection. It might not exist in your tiny world, but lots of things don't exist in your world. Lots of things don't exist. Fucking shoelaces, fucking, you know, going outside without wearing a helmet. Remember. Remember that, folks. Remember that the female organism doesn't matter and it probably doesn't exist. As if, when am I going to use that piece of... When am I go, at what point am I going to need to remember that in order to fucking throw it into... At what point is that... When is that going to be a bit of useful trivia for me? What pub quiz is that? Or am I, am I supposed to say it... Am I supposed to use that as a, as a defence against the, you know, the next woman I disappoint? <laughs> Which, let me tell you, I ain't acting. Uh, well, excuse me, darling. Um, whilst that may have seemed, as you put it, you know, very uh, short, and whilst, yes, you know, in, in terms of, like, in relative terms as far as, you know, Western time goes, that was, you know, a, an extraordinarily um, quick uh, sexual experiment. To be honest, I hadn't even got my trousers off. We're still in the car. But remember that the female orgasm, A, doesn't matter, and B, probably doesn't matter. He's put probably. Yeah, so he's at least open-minded about it. He's willing to entertain the notion. But even if it does exist... <laughs> Now, when the media reported, when some mainstream media, there's like two, when some of the media, media reported, you know, reported that, oh, the, you know, UKIP has now been infiltrated by a bunch of alt-right fucking wet fannies on, on YouTube, they referred to these guys, including Paul Joseph Watson. Paul Joseph Watson was extremely pissed off and upset and offended and, uh, how would you put it, triggered! He was triggered because, <laughs> because they had the gall. These media outlets had the absolute audacity, the fucking, to refer to Paul Joseph Watson as alt-right. I know, I know, I know. What, on, why, where, where, who are these people? See that, folks, I mean, if you, if you want an example of fake news, I mean, I, I find, I personally don't, can't believe they referred to him as alt-right and didn't call him a fucking stupid rat-faced pedo-looking cunt. That's what I would have preferred. You know, so Paul Joseph Watson, extremely offended. Now, bear in mind, this is Paul Joseph Watson. This is the guy who spends his days calling people soy boys and cucks and men of putties and manginas. And he makes videos that are literally things like, all feminists are fat, stupid, ugly, fucking purple-haired, saggy titted fucking hairy, grenadier guard pubes, fucking fatty, drinking out of their fucking tankers with their real ale, with their tattoo of I hate men, and they're, you know, because they're crippled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did a bit of research. <clears throat> I'll, I'll say research, um, 
this was this was Sargon levels of research. I mean, it was minutes, seconds. And I found, I think I found where they got this idea. But I found the, the fucking, I found the piece of shit that they might have got their source on this issue. So, Paul, if you want to know, the person who may have, uh, you know, may have, you know, uh, given you uh, that label, may have told them and led them to believe it, was this, it was this fucking absolute steaming pile of fucking badger spunk called who goes by the name of Paul Joseph Watson, uh, who in 2016 tweeted out the following, the left-wing meltdown over the alt-right is hilarious. You, you guys created us by abandoning liberal, liberal principles like Western civilization. When is the left, I'm sorry, you want to talk about free speech as one thing or another, but Western civilization. Yes, the left is, is determined to end Western civilization. Not just civilization, but the Western part too. We want to be, we, we want to move, we want the entire fucking concept of just, you know, we don't want a round planet. We're sick of having a West. Who needs a West anyway, you know? But there's another tweet, uh, pr pretty much not that long, not that long after, you put, um, out of everyone on the alt-right, doxing uh, poses the biggest threat to me. Well, my question is this, you know, because even Count Dankula said he was doing it for a laugh. He thought it would be a laugh. So the Nazi pug thing, we move on from that, but he's now joined UKIP along with Paul Jones with Watson, Milo Yiannopoulos and Sargon of Akkad. My question is, this whole it's for the lols, it's just a joke. You know, it's a rib. My whole question is, how much do these guys have to do? How far do they have to go in terms of basically doing exactly what these people on the far right do? Doing everything that the right wing do, saying everything the right wing say, you know, basically advocating and believing and, li and making arguments and, uh, you know, stating opinions that are identical to things the far right. How, many, how far long does this have to go on? At what point do we stop and go, okay, uh, you know, just own it? You know, I've met some reprehensible fucking you know people on the internet. You know, and uh, who 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 say and you know who say and believe in the most vile, in, you know, in, inhuman, monstrous, fucked up shit. You know, ever you know, who defend the most disgusting, horrific, mon you know, just atrocities throughout history. Some will even deny it. I, but what I will say is for. For people like you find on Stormfront, for the people you do find, like Richard Spencer even, you know, at least when they say the fucking disgusting offensive shit that they say, they at least have the fucking integrity and the intellectual honesty to stand there and go, and that's what I believe. Spice World, you know, they don't, sit, you know, you guys, you guys can't do that. You guys do it, then you guys, express the same views and then you go it's just a joke no it ain't it ain't a joke because it, it ain't funny and the reason it ain't funny is because what you're doing has no punchline where's the joke anyone can come on the internet and act like a cunt just for the sake and then claim it's just for the sake of it that's like the easiest thing to do it's the most common thing if anything it's kind of ordinary you know Pretending to be someone who's a decent human being would be a shocking thing, but when you do that, oh, it's political correctness and it's virtue signaling and it's thought police. And you fuckers wanted this whole thing recently about civility in politics because of Sarah Sanders getting kicked out for civility. Oh yeah, if she'd been black or gay and it had been a Christian who owned that restaurant and they didn't want them in there, they didn't want these fucking woolly woofters in there, you'd be like, well, that's their right, that's their belief, they have the right. Private business owners should have the right to discriminate against anyone they want. They're discriminating against conservatives. This is basically like Nazi Germany. You can't sit there and defend private business owners' rights to discriminate, right? only because they're not discriminating against you. It's a principle, you know, you can't sit there and go, well, I was all for it when the blacks and the queers were the subject of discussion, but now, I'll tell you what happened to civility, it got grabbed by the pussy, you know, by a Mexican illegal immigrant from MS-13 who's a drug dealer and a rapist and whose child was put into a detention centre. That's what happened to civility. This is one of the conceits of these cunts, is it's all a laugh, it's a joke, and, oh God, triggered, the left can't take a joke. Yeah, well, do you know what? The left, I'm left wing, and I can take a joke. 
I can take a joke. I, I, you know, I. It seems to me, in my experience, look, I've been blocked on Twitter by Stefan Molyneux, by Dave Rubin, by Donald Trump, by Seb Gorka, by fucking every, by Paul Joseph Watson. <laughs> I've been blocked by all these cunts. I was blocked by, you know, Gad Sard. I've been blocked by fucking all of these people. Tara McCarthy, Mike Cernovich. You know, I've been blocked. Do you know why I got blocked? Because I said, because I made a joke at their expense. And because I, I know how to write jokes and I know how to be cruel, it, they blocked me one go. So don't tell me about fucking, you know, taking it on the chin or it's just a joke. Oh yeah, it wasn't a joke when Michelle Wolf ripped it out of Donald Trump. It wasn't a joke when it was fucking what? When it was Kathy Griffin put a head on it. It's not a joke when Bill Maher does his stuff. About, it's never a joke when it's actually a joke about conservatives or anything right wing, which you then will sit there and go, oh, the left has killed comedy. How's the left killed comedy? Well, because, you know, because lib liberals have taken over the comedy. All comedians, most of them, you know, virtually all comedians are, are, lib are left wing. Uh, okay. What does that tell you? So the left killed comedy by basically being better at it than you. Maybe if you guys weren't easier to make fun of, or maybe if you didn't say things that most le comedians would, would kill to write as a joke, you know. Maybe if that was the case. If you think you're so fucking funny, why don't you make a fucking joke about it? Why don't you go on the circuit? Because you won't get a gig. Because there's no joke here. You know what kills comedy? It's not political correctness. It's people who use comedy as an excuse. Who think that jokes, are, you know, are, are, are saying something's a joke renders it meaningless. To me, you, you do, you guys are to comedy what creationists are to, to evolution. You are what, you know, what fucking anti-vaxxers are to, to health. You know, you are, you have bastardised comedy and people like me are now, I'm the one who's getting flagged off of YouTube. I upload videos that are mocking views that you have, but my videos get taken down for hate speech that you were, res were responsible for. <laughs> but you guys get to say whatever the fuck you want. You and your million subscribers as I'm here on my fifth channel. Where's my march? If punching a Nazi turns people into Nazis, then surely just flagging Coughlin is only going to make... Flagging Coughlin will only spread my message further. This is, this is what the sceptic is nowadays, ladies and gentlemen. That's the sceptic. That's the rationalist. That is the reasonable one. These are the men, you know. It's the women, you know. These women who are emotionally unstable and... These women who, quite frankly, are just, you know... It's, it's, it's very quaint, you know, but uh, they're not cut out for this shit. No. Men. You know what, lads? I think it's time. We've been in charge forever. Look, we've been in charge since there was ever anything to be in charge of. We invented the things to be in charge of. You know, and we've been in charge ever since. You know? In fact, it's only in the last hundred years in Western civilization that women have actually started gaining ground. You know, so we've had a good run. And I'm just saying that based on this, I think our time's up. And I don't want us to stay around too long. I don't want us to outstay our welcome. I don't want us to become that fucking boxer who should have retired. Or the fucking, you know, or just, I don't want us to be the actor who was great once and now just makes shit films constantly. I don't want us to be that person. I don't want us to be that. I want us to fucking step down gracefully. Give women the keys to the castle. Say, look, girls, look, we're swapping places. You're in charge. We'll, we'll have your stuff in. We'll even go back to 1910. Right, we'll stay at home, right? And I'll tell you what. We'll, do, we'll, I'll, we'll swap places. You're in charge of everything. And what we'll do, we'll be reasonable. We'll give you... We'll give you a century, 100 years, and if in 100 years the world has obviously gone, you know, very tits up, much worse, you've completely fucked it, you've shown you're not ready for this, you know, you need to go back down the uh, pecking order, we will just come back and take over again, and when you, you know, and we'll sort it out, I just think it's about time, you know, we've proved our point, lads, you know, and we need a bit of, I think we deserve a fucking holiday, we deserve a break. And you know what? I think I might join UKIP too. And we'll never rest again Until every Nazi dies Where there's no sense, there's no feeling. Good night, may God be less.